welcome back to 13C. Today, the Hatsan Flash Pup. Now this particular one is in 25 caliber, and uh, what we're gonna do here is, uh, this video is gonna take place over the next about two weeks. So you're gonna have today, which is the first day this is being fired, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk you through step-by-step -step the PCP air gun process, uh, and specifically with this Flash Pup here. So that, because a lot of our subscribers are new to air rifles, new to PCP, and hopefully this will let you step through the process with us <coughs> as we go through doing this. Now, uh, we've got a right on 6 to 24 power optic on here. This is a ton of magnification, uh, but um, it's on this QD mount from right on, and it also will focus all the way down to 10 yards. The parallax, I should say, is all the way down to 10 yards on this out to 500 yards and then beyond that is infinity. So there's a huge range in here. Today we're gonna to be sighting it in at 35 yards and trying to see just kind of what kind of groupings we can get out of this. Some preliminary data suggests it's pretty good. I'm not gonna speculate though, because like I said, we haven't even fired this yet. So uh, anyway, we're gonna walk you through step-by-step -step process. The first step is today, getting this sighted in. Later on, we're gonna we're gonna walk through the process with you, refilling the air cylinder, uh, loading magazine, you name it, we're gonna go through it. So you know uh, basically everything there is to know about this as we go through it. So it's uh, what's been requested quite a bit on our social media channels, and uh, we're gonna do it here for you today, and well, I guess over the next couple of weeks. Stay tuned, you won't wanna miss it. I'm gonna try and take into account the height over bore issue we're having with this setup and uh, land us some rounds mostly shooting for groups if I can get our tight group into the bullseye bonus points but we're going for groups right now let's see if we can uh, let's see how she does So here's our 12 rounds. That one was definitely me. And that's not too shabby. So we're still in the green on our air tank. We're gonna put uh, 12 rounds through here and see just what kind of uh, groupings we can get out of this with the slightly lower uh, air pressure in the tube. See if we can keep that consistency we were seeing uh, when we were higher up in the green earlier. So this flash pup is in, it's brand new. The first rounds ever fired through it were earlier today while we were getting it sighted in. I'm not sure if there's a break-in period on barrels or on air rifle barrels or not. Um, I'm gonna look into that, I'll find out. But uh, what I will say is that either I've settled down, the rifles, the air rifle settled down, or both of us had settled down. Um, and 12 pellets all right here, well under an inch, pretty much everything touching just eating out the center of that hole there if I'm doing my part uh, that flash pup is certainly doing its part so uh, I'm pretty pleased with what I'm seeing here today uh, it's starting to get late the sweat bees are out more in force which is a little distracting when you're trying to do uh, a little bit more precise shooting so uh, that's gonna wrap it up so if I had this video to do over I probably would have put out that first look video about two months ago when I did that original filming day and then come back today with a second video on it. But as it stands, I didn't. So uh, we're gonna take our experiences uh, from where we picked off where this video is now cutting into today. 
uh, and the past two months as we've gone through and used this and put a tremendous amount of pellets through it thus far. As you can see, we changed out optics on it. I scaled down to something smaller. This is a one to four power uh, variable optic with an illuminated reticle. I think for something this size is probably better suited than that larger optic we had on it. That's of course moved on to other things and there is a standalone video out on that uh, that would have dropped probably about a week before this video was dropping. So if you're interested in that right on Mod 5, go ahead and check that out. We'll put some links down below. Maybe we'll have a pop up uh, as well so you can click over to it if you're interested. Let's get down to the nitty gritty of this platform. Uh, it's available in three calibers. You have .177, you have 22 caliber, and then 25 caliber. This one's in 25 caliber, so we're pretty much going to focus in on, uh, on the specs for this one. We'll have some links down below if you want to check out the specs on the other ones. Um, just really quickly though, uh, with the .177, you're looking at 1250 feet per second. With that 22 caliber, you're looking at 1120 feet per second as your maximum speeds. And then for the 25 caliber, you're looking at about 910 feet per second. Uh, some interesting anecdotal uh, evidence that we had. We had um, one of my buddies was out uh, with his chronometer and we chronoed some of these pellets coming out of here as you went through the range of, uh, of uh, air pressures out of here. And uh, it looks like that 910 is probably pretty close. And until you get down to this uh, where your green goes to yellow, you're pushing pretty close to 900 in the 880s to 900 range, even as you're coming up on your yellow indicator here as far as for your pressure gauge, just kind of looking at it from there because I know you can't read it from here. But we're going to go fill this up yet again uh, in just a minute. We'll include that footage in here as well so you can see how to refill this from an air compressor uh, yourself. Once you get down into the yellow, about every shot after that is going to be losing about 20 feet per second. Now, we, didn't we haven't taken it all the way down to zero. Uh, and bottom this thing out yet, but that's about anecdotally where you're looking. If you're looking at your gauge, you're wondering, well, how is this going to affect my pellets? Uh, keep in mind, you're losing about 20 feet per second off that, and I'm sure it's going to get bigger because as you started to get lower down in that pressure range, started going to 25-ish, maybe even pushing 30 as you get deeper into this yellow range. Like I said, we didn't bottom it out, but um, you know we took it down to about 50 uh, bar of pressure in there. Can tell looking at this guy and in the video we've been doing it is a bolt action uh, it's got a rifled barrel and this comes in at 6.1 pounds uh, with no optic on it 32 inch overall length and 19.4 inches on your barrel so i was cruising around some various stats on this guy and on air gun depot they have the for the loudness factor this rated as a three uh next to it it says medium i this thing is not loud uh, at all. I would probably put this more in a low category as far as, far as sound-wise. Uh, this uh, seems to do a pretty good job of keeping the uh, sound down on it, and especially uh, not just from a shooter's perspective, but if, you're have, if you have someone else shooting and you're standing a few feet off, this thing uh, for an air rifle is pushing a 25 caliber pellet that fast. This thing is, uh, is not bad at all, and the sound of the pellet hitting the, the berm or my backstop at 35 yards when you're standing a couple feet off of this is just as loud as the air rifle itself. So not, uh, not anything of uh, consequence to note there as far as sound. It's, uh, it's definitely not, uh, not loud by any means. It's, it's fairly quiet. In my so when I went to put this optic on here, I had to order a separate set of rings, one that would match up for these 11 millimeter dovetails on here. Now it says Weaver and 11 millimeter dovetails for the rail. Um, if you're coming over like most of the folks watching this channel from the firearm side of things. Uh, this is a narrower rail and a different type. Some, some 22s have this type of rail on them. Uh, you're gonna make sure that your rings match up to this, otherwise you're not gonna be able to put your optic on here. Uh, the good news with this being a PCP and not a Springer is that you can put pretty much any uh, optic you want on here and you're not gonna damage it. On Springers, obviously, you wanna make sure that they're rated for an air rifle because you have that uh, different impulse in a, in a, in a Springer type uh, air rifle than you would on a PCP. Adjustable cheek comb in the back as well as a two-stage adjustable trigger. Uh, your safety is in here. Back is on. Push it forward to disengage your safety. Fixed 165 cc air tank inside of it uh, rated to a maximum pressure of 200 bar uh, which is 2,900 psi. The caliber that I have here and that internal air tank, Hotson rates this one at 20 to 25 shots at optimal velocity. Um, from what I've tested, I say they're probably being conservative on that 20 to 25, and I think you're definitely going to get, at least in my experience, I'm winding up getting 30 shots out of this that are in that optimal range, what I would be consider optimal. So if it's rated for 910 uh, feet per second, and on the chrono, I'm getting, you know, 880, 890, 
uh, through 30, uh, 30 shots out of this. I consider that to be pretty optimal in my opinion anyway. So um, you can look at, at least in my experience anyway, getting about 30 shots out of this, even though it says 20 to 25. Um, if you're going to smaller calibers, you're going to get more shots uh, out of it because obviously you're using less air to push a smaller pellet. For the purposes of this video, we pretty much exclusively use the H&N Sport uh, 25 caliber pellets. They are their Barracuda and they are long range hunting. I think it's uh, th almost 31 grains as a pellet weight. I think it's like 30 and a half grains if I remember correctly. While we're talking about rails, while this top is a Weaver 11 millimeter, on the bottom here, uh, this seems to be a standard 1913 pick style, uh, Picatinny style rail on the bottom. I had no problem putting my Atlas bipod on the bottom of this while I was shooting. So we have our 4500 PSI air compressor here from Air Venturi. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this, is a, this air tank in here is 200 bar or 2900 PSI. 2900 PSI, 4500 PSI. So one of the ways to make sure that you don't accidentally overfill this is on top here, there's a pressure gauge. You set it to the maximum pressure you want. When it gets to that point, it shuts the compressor down for you. Obviously, you want to keep your eye on it yourself make sure you know you're paying attention and whatnot and you want to test that before you actually with a with a plug on the end of your compressor hose to make sure it will shut off when it gets that temperature pre uh, when it gets that psi but it's a nice fail safe to make sure if you're using an air compressor pay attention to these things and hopefully have something with a fail safe on it like this anyway we have our fill no nozzle here with a uh, quick attach on it we want to connect it up to here First step is to, we've got our compressor plugged in. We checked all our fluid levels, everything else. We push this in. It pushes out this little uh, pin in here which protects it from dirt and gunk and crap getting inside there. Make sure you hold on to this. You want to replace it as soon as you're done with this. We've got it in here. We've got all that taken care of. Next, first thing we do, we turn on our cooling system. Give that a second to fire up. We'll start circulating. After we do that, we already had our pressure set, we checked all our levels, everything's good to go. We're gonna turn the compressor on. So that was the, I was watching it closely, and that was the automatic compressor turning itself off once it hit 200 bar. So I'm gonna turn this compressor off. The cooling system's still running. I'm gonna let the cooling system run for just a little longer before I turn it down. I'll let that run for a few seconds. Uh, before you disconnect this, step one is to open your release valve down here. Let some of the uh, extra pressure blow out. There we go, we got that done. Now this has a valve in it to prevent that pressure from escaping, so you're not gonna drain your uh, tank in here by opening that crack up. And then, boom, pulls right out. That's it. I'm gonna close this up, just so I don't have to worry about it for next time. Cooling system's doing its job. It's already down to 24 degrees centigrade, which is fine by me. I don't need to keep running this. It's cool out here. Temperature's just gonna keep falling on its own. It won't hurt anything. Anyway, that's it. It's that quick, that simple, and that easy to fill. And our fill time on that, going from about 75 bar up to the max 200 bar, was two and a, three minutes, three minutes roughly. I didn't time it the, the exact second. That was about three minutes to fill this, which uh, that's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, let's go put some more rounds Last down. note here on the down. compressor, eye and ear protection uh, is going to be a must, especially your eye protection. You don't want, you've got high, high pressure air going on here. You don't want to blow, uh, you know, be it a, a tiny piece speck of dirt or dust get in your eye, or God forbid, something worse. So definitely wear some eye protection. Haven't had anything fly out or go nuts at me or anything else, but the one time you let your guard down is when something can happen. And a note on the ear protection, if you're using this thing inside, and I purposely pulled it just outside here, um, it's not really loud out here. Your neighbors are gonna hear it for sure, but. I don't think, just, just anecdotally, you should wear your hearing protection. For me, out here running it while I'm talking to you here, I don't really feel the need to wear ear protection. Uh, if I was running this indoors, 
I definitely would wear ear protection though. Out here, without reverberating off anything and being mostly open on three sides with the exception of the structure here next to us, um, just off camera, that's, uh, that's where we're at. Anyway, let's hit it. Familiar with these rotary magazines, after you load one a couple of times, it's gonna be very straightforward. But the first time can be a little tricky because it's a little deceiving when you look at it initially. Uh, these are self-advancing magazines so that every time you run the bolt, it's automatically gonna put another pellet in position. So when you move it forward, you can just close it and shoot. You don't have to manually turn this or anything once it's inserted. So this is what I'm gonna to refer to as the back of the magazine. And this is what I'm gonna to refer to as the front of the magazine. And I refer to it in that way because when you stick it into your rifle, and we're gonna pretend the muzzle's pointing that way, I have it into my shoulder, stick it into the rifle. This is the part that's facing toward the muzzle, and this is the part that's facing back toward you. Facing back toward you so you can look through this clear thing, see how many pellets you have remaining in here. So to load it, if you're looking at it from this side, you're gonna turn it counterclockwise. Now you insert the pellets from this side of the magazine. Now remember, we're calling this side the front of the magazine. And in the front, of the ma the front side of the magazine is where you want the front of your pellet. So when you push that and open it up, you can kind of see that clear hole through there, right? Just take your pellet, drop it down in there, pellet side up. Push down in there, there you go. Now you rotate it again, continuing to round, rotate it depending which direction you're looking from, counterclockwise there. Take your next pellet, stick it in, and you just rotate it again. You open up another hole here, drop another pellet in, and so forth. Now when you're done, you're gonna take this uh, sleeve here, or this clear portion, and rotate it back to the front. I'm just gonna stop there, we'll just go with what we have loaded. Take it, rotate it back to the front, make sure your pellet drops in, <laughs> make sure your pellet drops in there all the way so you can actually close it all the way forward. Rotate it back closed to that position. In the front here, you have your pellet facing forward, all the backs of the pellets are facing back toward you. So, we'll grab the rifle. We're gonna grab the rifle for you. Front of the magazine, back of the magazine, the rifle. There's a slot right here. Lock your bolt to the back. You can see there's a little channel right there if you look at it. Put the channel in there, push it in. Bring your bolt forward, push it down. You are ready to shoot, take your safety off, press the trigger, and there you go. One thing I would note on this, um, this you can rotate this in here if you look just a little bit. I don't know how common that is for air rifles. Um, it did it on both magazines. I haven't seen any kind of functionality issues with this as far as any malfunction wise or anything, but I did think that was interesting to note that this uh, there's a little bit of play in there even with this bolt forward. So anyway, we're locked forward. We have a safe backstop back there. We've got a little target. Let's, uh, let's go take a shot at it. <laughs> yeah, great. I think as the sun's going down here, I got a little bit of a ugh, spider web from the tree here that just came down on me. Let's hope I'm not being attacked by a spider. <laughs> that thing is nice and quiet. It's actually, as the shooter, you're hearing what's happened internally here more so than, uh, than the actual pellet going down range, which is pretty neat if you have a chance to hear one of these uh, with someone else shooting, it sounds really good. And anyway, we put safety so back We've had on. a ton of fun with this thing over the past couple months. Um, if you really want to have some fun, take you know a couple small golf balls or something along that size, put them out uh, you know on your safe backstop, and just have fun plinking and bouncing these things uh, all over from 25, 35 yards out. Uh, there, you can have a lot of fun with air rifles. Thank you for joining us on our journey with our first PCP air rifle. We're gonna have a lot more to come. We're also going to uh, be talking about this more on social media. Friday nights with 13C, it's something we do uh, every Friday night, at least we will up until the end of 2018 anyway, and we may wind up changing nights. But uh, get feedback, talk to you guys uh, on Instagram or at 13C Gun Reviews. Follow us Facebook, facebook.com forward slash gun reviews. If you haven't subscribed already, please take a moment to subscribe. Hit that notifications bell if you're already subscribed and sign up for our newsletter. Uh, we do uh, giveaways throughout the year, uh, mid-November 2018. If you're signed up for the newsletter, you're entered in. Uh, check out the video that we have there for a Geisley SSP trigger giveaway. That's a heck of a value. Thank you so much to Geisley for that. If you're uh, not into firearms or you're just getting started out in firearms and you don't know the name uh, Geisley, definitely look them up. Uh, they make some amazing and phenomenal triggers.
Anyway, I think that's gonna wrap it up for today. Thanks so much. Stick around, uh, subscribe. We're gonna have a video on that air compressor coming up probably not too long after this video comes out. We'll go through the whole step of setting that up from taking it out of the box to setting it up, running it, filling it for the first time, purging it, everything you need to know to uh, run that air compressor as well. That'll be a standalone video. Thanks again, everyone. Take care, stay safe. We'll talk soon.